The path to becoming a doctor is challenging, but it's also misunderstood. Along the way for me, there were many mindset shifts and life lessons that will stick with me for the long run. My name is Tim and I'm a first year resident physician. Here are six life lessons I learned on the way to becoming a doctor. Med school teaches treatment of disease, not prevention. It's estimated that 90% of type 2 diabetes, 80% of heart disease, 70% of stroke, and 70% of colon cancers are preventable. The annual healthcare cost of preventable disease is estimated to be over 25% of healthcare costs. That's over $730 billion annually. But in medical school, our education focuses more on the treatment of these diseases and their complications rather than prevention. Just imagine how many lives would be saved and healthcare costs reduced if we invested more into preventive medicine. We learn hundreds of pharmaceutical drugs, therapies, and surgeries, but very few diet and exercise routines. And while every treatment decision made by a doctor is made after a thorough risk-benefit analysis, any treatment can have harmful side effects. For example, abdominal surgery increases risk of needing another surgery down the road because of adhesions that cause bowel obstruction. Often, the interventions themselves can be risk factors for further illness down the road. IV fluids can worsen heart failure. Steroids that treat inflammatory diseases can raise your blood sugar. These are just a couple examples, but the list goes on. The human body is such a complex network of organ systems. Disruption of this network always has unintended consequences. That's why I live by the mantra, prevention is the best medicine. With a consistently healthy diet, exercise routine, and sleep schedule, you can lower your risk of diabetes, heart disease, strokes, anxiety, and depression, and many, many, many more. The next lesson is that you're always still learning. I recently read the book, Mastery by Robert Greene, and this quote stuck with me. Mastery is not a function of genius or talent. It is a function of time and intense focus applied to a particular field of knowledge. Medicine happens to be a highly structured application of this philosophy. Even after studying all the pathology, physiology, anatomy, and pharmacology day in and day out for four years, there's still an ocean of knowledge and skills I still have left to learn. Humility and openness to learning is the best attribute to have for achieving mastery in any field. Even fully trained physicians encounter diseases and situations that they never had to in the past and have to review the guidelines of treatment and read more about it to inform their next steps. What makes physicians masters of their craft are those who have a nonstop hunger for learning to refine their craft over time. The next one is never give up what makes you happy. Some days it felt like the harder I studied, the less improvement I was seeing in my scores. I was getting diminishing returns from my hard work and something needed to change. I realized the answer when I found a flyer for a local baseball team. I tried out for the team and started playing that year. Putting on my baseball cleats, dusting off my wood bat, and stepping onto that baseball field brought me back to my roots. It allowed me to reclaim my identity outside of medicine. But the benefit of continuing to pursue your hobbies translates into your work life as well. I realized I started studying more efficiently and learning more material in less time. I was mentally rejuvenated and more motivated to study and perform well on my clinical rotations. My scores improved with what felt like less work than I was putting in before and all because I learned how and when to hit the reset button and how to not let medicine dominate my mental energy. The next one is you can always accomplish more in less time. When I started med school, I thought that my performance would correlate with how much time, effort, and work I put into my studying. And the night before every exam, I used to study as long as possible, all the way until my bedtime. I didn't leave any time for breaks, exercise, naps, or even meals. It took me over a year of mediocre test scores to learn that I was working harder and not smarter. I would break down my change in studying to two main principles, one being Parkinson's law and the second being active learning. Parkinson's law states that the amount of work you have expands to fill the time that you allow it to. For example, if you have Saturday and Sunday off to complete an assignment, just by the way humans operate, any human would tend to take both days to get the assignment done if it wasn't due until Sunday night. But if that same assignment was due Sunday night and you had work Saturday and only had Sunday to work on that, you're still likely to complete that assignment on Sunday in half of the time. This can explain why students involved in sports, music, and other extracurriculars can still be academically successful because they allow less time to complete the same amount of homework. And that's why I chose to go back to playing baseball during medical school when I previously thought that I wouldn't have any time for it. Second one, active learning decreases your study time significantly by helping you integrate the information you're learning more efficiently. The next one is your definition of success will change as you grow and mature. In college and even early in med school, I had aspirations of being a neurosurgeon at the top of my field. 
I thought there was no greater path than to devote my life to surgery, save lives, and research cutting edge advancements in the field. That started to change once I realized the sacrifice of time and lifestyle that was required to succeed in such a field. Over time, I've learned how important my family is to me, that I wouldn't feel fulfilled even if I was incredibly successful in my career, if it was at the expense of my close family relationships. My definition of success has shifted drastically over the last five years, from being a renowned medical specialist to being a successful physician that is happy and healthy with time to devote to staying in shape, eating healthy, sleeping eight hours a night, taking my wife on dates, raising my children well, and having time for side hustles and hobbies outside of medicine. A quality life for me now is a well-balanced one. The last lesson is if you're making progress, you've already made it. A common belief for most people and even for many med students is that once you're making six figures, you can afford a house, a Tesla and luxury vacations. That's when you can say you've made it in life. But in reality, once you commit yourself to improving, you've already made it. From that point forward, progress is your success. After every milestone you hit, you think about reaching the next one. As a fully trained doctor or whatever lofty life goals that you have, you will have a higher salary and have more control over your schedule, but with greater success always comes new and greater challenges. And the challenge of persistently striving to reach the next level in life is what actually fulfills you. I hope this video provided some value to you. If you've made it this far, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.